friends, thank you so much for clicking this video. My name is Heather Chesina and you are welcome. I am so excited about this video because it is the Bible verse challenge. And I know what you're thinking, what is a Bible verse challenge about? Well, it's a challenge that I'm starting so that we can all memorize scripture. And the reason why this is very important is because we are in the pivotal year of 5784 or the decade of pay. So this is a very welcome challenge and I hope you will embrace it as well. And we will go over three things in this particular video. So the first one is we're going to go over the decade of pay and then we will go over how to function in the decade of pay. And then I will give you some tips and tools on how to memorize scripture. So get yourself a cup of tea or coffee or whatever beverage you like. Relax and let's begin. Here is an overview of the decade of pay. I'm sure you've had so many people talk about we are in the decade of pay, but what exactly does that mean? Well, I'm here to give you a simplistic overview of the decade of pay. So pay is the 17th letter of the Hebrew alphabet and it has a numerical value of 80. And not only that, it is a picture of a mouth. Now here's the beautiful thing about the Hebrew alphabet. The letter also has a numerical value. In addition to that, it also has a picture or a pictorial element to it. So keep in mind that when it comes to pay, it is the 17th letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It has a numerical value of 80. In addition to that, it has a picture of the mouth. So that's what you need to understand. The decade of pay started in the year 5780. That would be 2020. And it goes over to 5789. So that's when the decade will end. So essentially we are in the 80s <laughs> in um, the Hebrew uh, calendar or the Jewish calendar. We are in the 80s. Now, the reason why this decade of pay is important because since it has the picture of the mouth or the symbol of the mouth, that means that it is attached to what we speak and what we say. The kingdom of God is voice activated. We have to say things. Let's go back to creation. What happened? God spoke and things came to be. So in the decade of pay, the decade of the mouth, we need to declare scripture. And that is why the Bible verse challenge is very important. A quick segue. I grew up in the church. I went to Nairobi Pentecostal Church, Valley Road, for 19 years of my life. And that is located in Nairobi, Kenya. We actively memorized scripture because we had leaders in the church who believed that you are never too young to memorize scripture. And every week we had a verse that we needed to memorize. And then during VBS, they would crank it up and we would actually memorize chapters. And I recall going up to the altar and every child was given the microphone and they would recite maybe Psalms 21 or Psalms 91 and it was basically from your memory. So I grew up memorizing scripture and I believe that has really helped me have a really good arsenal of scripture that still benefits me today. I might not know exactly where in the Bible it is, but if you start a scripture, I will probably finish it. Uh, Yes, so I really thank God for that upbringing. After I immigrated to America at the age of 19 by a green card, I switched from actively memorizing scripture to passively memorizing scripture because there was no, I don't know if I should say incentive, but I just felt as if there was, maybe I shouldn't say that, I don't know if I should say this, but in any case, I stopped memorizing scripture actively. 
I would just maybe do Bible study. And when I do Bible study and I read a particular passage over and over again, then I would have a semblance of the scripture. <laughs> it would be mostly paraphrasing or most of the time what would happen is the Holy Spirit will bring it to my remembrance. Now, because we are in the decade of pay, I've changed because I now want to actively memorize scripture and also brush up on a lot of scripture that I feel as if I've become so rusty. For example, Ephesians 6, I knew it word for word because that's something that I would actually recite uh, by my bed. When I was in boarding school at the age of 13, I would memorize the, I, I memorized the scripture. So before I would go to bed, I would just recite Ephesians 6 and in addition to that Psalms 91 and Psalms 23. So that's something that I did over and over. So yeah, I need to <laughs> I need to go back and really brush up on that because yes, I know Ephesians 6, I can kind of bounce around and tell you the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth and all that stuff. But there are a couple of words where I hop and I miss. <laughs> and in the decade of pay, I can't be doing that. I need to be much better about it. So that's why this Bible verse challenge is also mine. I thought of perhaps uh, coming up with verses <laughs> for you guys and for me to memorize together. However, I believe everyone is in a different walk in this decade of pay. Maybe some people are walking towards open doors for their healing. So that would be different verses that you need to memorize or commit to memory. For me, maybe I'm looking for open doors towards a specific thing, maybe a business or whatever. So the different verses that I would commit to memory in addition to all the other ones that I need to brush up on. So with a Bible verse challenge, I am leaving it up to you to come up with all the verses that you need to memorize. In the last uh, year, which is the year of Goshen 5783, I had quite a number of pages of scripture. And as I would pray and declare the scripture, I just feel as if I, I now, <laughs> although it was kind of passive, but now I feel as if I have extra, like maybe 50 additional scriptures that are in me so i think that's a good thing and yes so that's just a quick segue <laughs> and we will get back to tips and tools on how to memorize scripture for this section of my video i've pulled out my phone because i do not want to deviate and go off on a tangent i want to keep time because i time is literally not on my side right now i wrote a blog post titled 15 plus easy tips on how to memorize scripture fast. And the reason why I wrote this blog post is I was on a hunt and I decided to research if there are new technologies or ways that I can personally memorize scripture fast. I found quite a bit of interesting things. The first one that I'll mention is the Bible apps. There are quite a number of Bible apps that are pretty good Number one is Bible memory app, Versify, Bible, <laughs> okay, if I can pronounce that, Bible memory by Memlock, Fighter Verses, and Remember Me. And I went ahead to review. Look, I went to all this particular apps and their desktop websites because I'm all about research. I don't like putting stuff on my website that is not correct. So I did my own personal research. I downloaded the apps and after it, I personally wasn't feeling it because I'm kind of old school. However, if you're much younger and you're very tech savvy, maybe that's something that you really like. And I feel as if this is a, I think Ver Versify. Versify, when I went to their website, I found out it was um, a, a sister brother duo who created it. And I think they're into tech and stuff. So it's so beautiful seeing young people rise up and do fun things like this. And another thing for the Versify app, it's so clean. It's so clean. I'm not getting paid to promote 
anything because I don't take spon- sponsorships or anything like that. But yeah, I put them down. Uh, so I think it's really good. Um, yeah. So if you're younger, maybe you can try those apps and stuff. For me, I'm old, old school, as I told you. <laughs> so I'll tell you a couple of things. Now, um, another tip is chunking. <laughs> chunking. <laughs> What am I saying? Chunking, right? So basically you're breaking down uh, segments of the scripture so that you can memorize and make it very easy. Um, And then another thing is spaced repetition, which I personally like, spaced repetition. And there is also clinical studies that prove that this is very effective. Another thing is visualization. And also I like to, (laughs) I like to be very animated when I'm memorizing scripture. So I like to visualize and um, if I'm saying a particular verse, I like to use my hands and my gestures so that I can remember something. And um, another thing is index cards or post-it notes. I really love that as well. Praying the scripture is another big one. Another one is write it down or fill in the blanks. Uh, Another one is music, uh, which is very, and as far as music, I feel as if those older musics, um, musics, the older music from the nineties was very good uh, because the reason why I say it was very good is because it was really scripture heavy, but yeah, the music from the nineties, Ron Kennelly and all these other people, they were really good with jump packing (laughs) one song it might be seven minutes but you will get a lot of scripture from it um i think i talked about physical emotions reading it aloud now here we go about bible translation you have to pick a bible translation that resonates with you for me nowadays i use kjv that's the bible version of choice although when i'm studying i like to look at other versions but KJV is my primary uh, version that I love. However, when I was much younger, we would use Good News and NIV. So I do have an arsenal of NIV uh, scriptures, which is totally good and fine. However, there are certain key scriptures that I feel as if NIV and other versions omit uh, pertinent information, like the one that talks about prayer and fasting, It's only available in the KJV, but it's omitted from other versions. So I would say just evaluate which versions that you like um, to use. It can also be just a mishmash. Like for me, there's some that I really like for NIV because of historical uh, memorization. And then nowadays, uh, KJV, that's what I use. Yeah, so that's basically it. You can try to maybe review my blog post because there's quite a bit of scripture. And what I love the most is just put in a bit of effort. At the end of the day, the Holy Spirit will bring it to remembrance. That's what I've I've seen time and time again is even if you're doing it passively, provided you're making an attempt, uh, what will happen is you, the Holy Spirit will drop this scripture in your spirit. And sometimes it's a scripture that you totally forgot about. Maybe you memorized it two, three, four years ago, and then he just drops it in your spirit and it's the fuel to take you to the next season. Yes, so that is basically it. Um, Let me see if I have anything else. Last point is on visualization because I did a deep dive on the book of Philippians because I had a reader who was very curious about the breakdown of Philippians 4, 6 to 7. And that's something that I do on my blog post is I break down scripture and The one for Philippians 4, 6 to 7, I'm so glad that I did that particular deep dive. So I did some kind of visualization where I also break down the scripture. And once you break it down, it becomes very easy to memorize. It's that time when I say goodbye or in Swahili, Kwaheri. However, I do not want to leave you empty handed. I have a quick 
piece of homework <laughs> that I want to give you. At the tail end of this particular video, I have a verse in Deuteronomy 31 that you can memorize. It's actually a very popular verse, but this is actually the verse in its entirety. <laughs> So what I've done is that I've chopped it up into, I think, four portions so that you can quickly memorize by the time the video is done. So stick around for that. And that's it, folks. I love you so much. And guess what? I will see you on the next one. Bye. <music>